Well, for the second night in a row, police in Philadelphia arresting dozens of teenagers for violating a curfew. Uh, the mayor earlier called for kids under 18 to be off the streets by 9 p.m. in some downtown neighborhoods. That's following a series of violent mob attacks that have been plaguing the city. But the curfew is sparking some controversy. That's because critics question its viability, and they wonder if it's prejudicial because it only applies to some parts of the city. That seems to be the controversy there. So let's bring in our power panel, Judy Miller, and investigative reporter, Deneen Borelli, a Project 21 fellow columnist for The Daily Caller, and Ellen Ratner, bureau chief of Talk Radio News Service, and all three are Fox News contributors. Thanks Thank for joining you. us Hello. on this rainy Saturday out there. <laughs> so what do we think? I mean, I, I guess at issue here in Philadelphia is whether you can apply this curview to certain areas um, in their uh, city. It's the center city and university area and not all areas. Of course you can. I mean, you have to apply these kinds of extraordinary measures where the problem is. It's the same kind of controversy we've had in New York about the stop and frisk policies. Mm -hmm. Do you stop and frisk everyone or do you stop and frisk people in high crime areas? I think Mayor Nutter should be saluted for his very no-nonsense approach to what could be a very serious situation. He's trying to stop this right well, away. Well, here's something, though, that happened, and this just came in, I guess, last night um, or this past weekend, which was the first weekend that this went into effect. Uh, there was uh, an event that they held at a bowling alley, and which was outside the areas of the curfew, and there was a stabbing. So uh, does that not uh, speak to the need to have it maybe in other areas? I think it should be in all areas, and I think it should take some lessons from Washington, D.C who, as you remember, in the late 60s had a lot of problems, and now they have a jobs program for kids in the summer. Pretty much anybody in Washington, D.C. can be part of that jobs program. They don't have these kind of problems. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. I give Mayor Nutter credit for speaking out against this because this is outrageous, deplorable behavior by these young black individuals. Where is Jesse Jackson? He's been silent. And where is Al Sharpton? They're supposed the to be program? the leaders w wait, of wait the black community, and mm -hmm. we have not we've heard nothing from them. So we need more black leaders to take on these issues when they come up. But this is about personal responsibility. I don't agree with the curfew because bringing in a police state is a slippery slope. Personal responsibility and where are the parents for these kids? Mm -hmm. And then That's there's a the whole problem. question of funding as well. When the city is already strapped for cash, how do they fund this? Well, but the point is, again, that that's why Washington, D.C. has been such a model, because they've been able to get these kids engaged. And this mm -hmm. all happened after the riots in the late 60s. And and now the kids learn some responsibility. Okay. I mean, maybe they need a Job Corps program for kids. Well, we, I, I know that we want to continue on this topic, <laughs> but let's get one more topic in before we go to break. A federal judge giving the okay for an atheist group to advertise on public buses in Arkansas. Well, the ads weren't banned, but the Transit Authority, the ad agency, they tried to make up um, the difference, or they pay, tried to make the group pay a three million dollar insurance policy before letting them put the ads up in case the buses got damaged. So what do we think about this? This is a victory for free speech. This group, no matter what you think about its message, has a right to put its message out there in the public if it's going to pay for it. And it shouldn't be asked to pay an exorbitant amount of money for the right to speak. It ended up being I, about thirty six thousand dollars that they had to pay. Well, I'm all for freedom of speech and they do have the right to put up the ads. I don't agree with their message. However, with the insurance policy, there have been buses that have been vandalized already. So really, the advertise the bus company mm -hmm. is protecting themselves. But they did make the the yeah, and the other thing is, yes. were there other, other political groups or Christian groups or any other kind of controversial groups that everybody doesn't sort of agree with that it isn't, you know, mm -hmm. go to the Ace Hardware or whatever. And but so there's a so, record of their message uh, promoting violence only or vandalism on the buses. Four out of 36. But it happens. So they're yes, trying it, to protect it happens, their property. But does Otherwise, that mean the we shut down? Have to free speech it. if you don't agree yeah. with the message no, by charging something that's so well, high. But they can the still discussion do the will continue when okay. we come up <laughs> after the break and we're going to talk about some new things. Kids finding a new way to read by relying on Fido. An amazing study shows why dogs aren't just your best friend.